with the NU Champions League getting very close to concluding. I wanted to go over some semifinals matchups today. We had played last week. We even have a tiebreaker game at the end because one of our series went to tiebreaker. So we will see which of our players managed to get their team into the finals. It was actually literally the last tiebreaker. It was a tiebreaker within the tiebreaker. You know, best of three. And he had it one to one. Pretty, pretty high, pretty high. For two of the best players as well in the pool. So, of course, y'all enjoy the tournament coverage again. Y'all enjoy daily uploads too, which I know you all do. There's a reason you're here. Subscribe, man. Let's help the channel out. Help us get towards our end of the year goal of 10k subscribers. I know we can do it. I need a little bit of help from y'all, so let's get into it. I also have a Gen 7 game in here. Ah, <laughs> uh, y'all know me. I love Gen 7. I love Gen 3. Whenever I can throw a little bit of love to them, I always try to, so... I threw this in here also because I had already covered a decent amount of the Gen 9 games, apparently. I, I had forgotten I recorded a video already talking about some of the semifinals. But I got more games that we hadn't covered, so I'm gonna look at them today. And of course, the kid himself, Kid Keo, making an appearance in Game 1 versus 3D. And 3D's got a interesting Sun team. It's not even like it diverges that much. It's more just there's a Whimsicott here. And that's moderately interesting. <laughs> Whimsicott, not a you see at all in Inu right now, losing access to a lot of its useful utility and the power level being a little bit high to justify offensive sets, at least in my mind, maybe not in 3D's mind. A little bit sad given the spawn had been a stalwart, a Gen 7, and even been kind of decent in Gen 8, but it is what it is. Kyo, meanwhile, just has some offense. I mean, there's really not much else to say. This is six offensive Pokemon. I look at this and like ideas running in my head are like, okay, is it Scarf Flygon with rocks? Maybe, you know, DD, this, um, Palmot, <laughs> you know, whatever Palmot and Inteleon sets you want to run. Chandelure, it could be Specs, you might also just run um, a different set, like Colberberry, you could run Boots. You don't really need the breaking power of Specs Shand on this type of build. And then Brute Bonnet, this is like the most projected Assault Vest Brute Bonnet I think I've ever seen. It's just a pretty nice glue mon on offense, giving you a lot of extra bulk. Still providing you some Sucker Punch too. And of course, Bonnet has a particularly nice niche in this battle of matching into Sun. So you can actually exploit 3D Sun. You've got extra revenge killing as well of these really fast fire types with the Sucker Punch. Just overall, I mean, Kyo, I really just like his matchup here. <laughs> Especially if, again, it's like... Scarf gone, DD thorns. These would be like things to really, I'd say, swing the battle immediately into his favor. So let's get into it. Of course, we see the Nine Tails led with because when in doubt, lead the Weather Setter versus Flygon. And immediately, Keo decides, you know what? I need to make a read. That Whimsicott looking a little too prime. Hits him with a Fire Punch. His Whimsicott then comes out immediately after seeing Fire Punch. And it takes a million. And this is maybe the most insulting turn of the battle because for some reason it lives. This is the equivalent of it living a Choice Banded Flygon's Fire Punch. And, you know, <laughs> something inside of me died when I saw that. Though also, you see Fire Punch Flygon and immediately it makes me think that it's not got rocks. Because, you know, EQ, U-Turn, Fire Punch, I feel like you want your Dragon Stab. And yeah, Shadowlord Shadow Ball, the Typh, we see here very clearly it's not Spec Shandy. And it's probably not Scarf, because again, I think we have that confirmed on Gone. So, we got that going for us. Shadowlord probably boots or something. Flygon then dies to a Sucker Punch, that's unfortunate. And the Thorns comes out, gets a Booster Energy Speed, which I remember seeing this and I was like, oh, so it is Hazards, but then it Ice Punches. <laughs> ice Punches twice in a row. So, it doesn't mean it's not Hazards. I think Keo was just trying to make sure that the Espeon didn't get to come in, but a little unfortunate, missing out on both those predictions, if that's the case. Intellion, though, then gets to come in. Easily Revenge called the Brute Bonnet because he's pushed in Torrent range. And then easily revenge called the Nine Tails as well in the Torrent Sun. Who cares? So, until I put in some work, of course, the Typh now comes out, able to revenge kill with the Sands. As the Bonnet comes back out, once again, we talked about this is very likely AV. Also, being able to exploit that lot, get a very free crunch, because everything would die. Very nice for Keo. Now, the Brute is going to unfortunately switch. I think Brute is well in this type of battle after the Sack of the Shandy is particularly scary, because if it Terra's. And it is AV, it's like, what do you even do? Okay, I say that. This Terran earlier into a Steel type, but imagine. <laughs> imagine if you could still Terra, my bad. So Palma comes out now. Hazel Revenge kills that Whimsicott. Forces out the Zard as well, because they're pretty much always specs on these Sun teams. 
as now the bonnet will be sacked. Although, we see the funniest thing ever, this brute bonnet taking only 76. So I ran the calc as well. This is not just max HP with an assault vest. This also has some special bulk. So, very funny there. As the Sucker Punch pushes hard into KO range of the solar power, except the sun runs out. That's unfortunate. But Palmot able to CC the Zard, and then as the Typhlosion comes out, we do see that the Palmot was actually Scarf. So, there you go. <laughs> Makes you gotta think about some of these sets too, because it could have been like Dragon Dance Flygon potentially. It was DD Flygon with um Fire Punch, Terra Steel, um Scarf Palmot, Specs and Teleon, and then um like we said like probably just boots on this. Hazards here, Assault Vest here, or maybe just, again, if you just wanted to boost energy speed. I don't know. But, very fun first game. High-paced, high-octane match to get us started here. As I now get a blue screen into the battle. That was very interesting. And we're seeing two reused teams already, so I don't have a ton to add at preview. Beyond that, we know this is the Physical Thunderous team that ZS used. And then this is the Scarf Legion team that we watched was Mints, yes, it was Mints get bunked by the sub-SD Salic Berry Flamigo. One of the most fire sets of all time. But as we look at the preview, really the reality of this game, as I look at it at least, is that Legion is going to probably be a problem. Because... One thing that was changed, I think the sets have been getting changed on this team. This, they changed it to a Scarf Palmot from the Natural Cure set, and it made it Banded Legion. And now, Banded Legion is a little bit funky of a guy, because Poros, you would say, is a good check. Flip turn does like 22%, and that doesn't seem like a lot, but it stacks up very, very quickly. And Legion already kind of gets a lot of opportunities to come in on Poros anyway, because, I mean, you resist Wave Crash, you're immune to CC, so you get a lot of opportunities to force chip on the Poros. Otherwise, I mean, what's he been checking you? You care about the Serena that much? Eh. It just flip turn forever into Jigalgy. Axel's scary, but if I have to, Altera. Scary guy, scary guy. On the flip side for Mr. Siri over here, Inteleon, always kind of good in this game. Although, you want to talk about a matchup where it's very, very limited. Yeah, this is one of them. <laughs> because you're going to feel like you need to Ice Beam a ton to try and catch one of these two. But Ice Beam doesn't really necessarily do a ton when you've got to consider Legion could come out. Again, we talked about this. Basket Legion is one of Inteleon's best offensive checks. And even throw in Registeel. I mean, Registeel could take a Hydro from full if it needs. You can tear into a Dragon type if it needs to as well to take the next. Of course, the Horse. Commonly tear a Dragon, so maybe you're able to um surprise the Inteleon like that. There, there's a lot to limit this guy, so... Let's get into this wonderful battle. As a Serena is led versus Dragalgy, and we immediately see why Triple Axel is a dog shit move, as it lands one time and just takes a million from Sludge Bomb, gets poisoned, and now is basically dead. <laughs> Dragalgy would have still lived Axel from full, like it would have taken like 90%, but it would have still lived. But it is very, very unfortunate. So now see Horse versus the Keys. Immediately, bro sets them rocks up. And this kind of just is. How you know Legion is going to be a problem this game? Because now this is taking over 25% every time it tries to come in on flip turn. And I mean, I'll see, again, it may not seem like a lot, but you start thinking about, okay, how many switches does the Poros actually have? It, it's not very good. So, we also know, of course, since this horse setup rocks, it's probably like a bulky setup, Regis, which is always kind of scary. And then we see the sack there in Serene, just keep the hazards up, get that Thunderous, and throw off your acrobatics. Horse takes a million from it because it's most likely especially defensive. Or it's Fizz Def and I just don't know my calcs, but it is what it is. And now the Palisand comes out, immediately roared at, and Teleon comes back out. And every time we will see Siri decide, Ice Beam is the move for me. He just wants to predict every turn. And like I mentioned, it doesn't matter because it's just a Basque Legion. Like, these predicts don't do as much as you probably want them to. And yeah, look at this. As I was talking about, this is taking over 25 every turn. It's It just took 30. And now it's gonna, you know, you gotta factor in the next turn of rocks. It's gonna be at 64. Taking a flip turn to be brought down to like 40. It's really bad really quickly. Now, of course, we see the generational trading of Serena versus the keys. Although Serena, with this whip, only does 30. Which, to me, looking at the team, 
Normally, you know, I'd say either it's not offensive Serena or it's like physically defensive Klefki. Since there's a Palisand though, I'm gonna say it's like a bulkier Serena set. Which, a little unfortunate <laughs> if you're Suku. I already say his name, I'm so sorry, Vem. But, end of the day, Serena still wins this trade. Even at the end, going for a Rapids, but just in case. Just in case Siri decided to get greedy. And now we see one of the most unfortunate turns of the battle right here. As y'all remember, I talked about how my view of it is Axel is best on offensive Serena. Because that's how you maximize the lure potential. Well, apparently I'm just stupid. Because, no, no, that's actually how you lure. Because you know that people will think you don't have Axel since you're defensive. <laughs> so he goes Thunder, so he gets clapped by the Axel. That's just unfortunate. And in the whip, of course, we again confirm that this is not a very offensive Serena. Whip doing child's play damage to the palace end. As the Legion now comes out, and once again, we will be pivoting. This Porus will keep taking a ton of chip. Eventually just incapable of standing up to the might of the Legion. As it comes right back out here as well. For another free flip turn. Because, you know, why not, man? Why not? Get flip turn all over the battle. Why not? It's fine. <laughs> then the Pama comes out. And it's actually where we see that it is Scarf Palmont as... Okay, I lied. It's actually where we see a Mudsdale Sack as Siri finally realizes, Wait, I can Hydro Pump! Oh my god! And he stays in, takes a Volt with the Inteleon. I mean, it's not like he really has a ton else that he can do here anyway. You know, his best play is to keep spamming the pump. That miss is a little unfortunate, but at the end of the day, I think Legion would have come out. Or um, Palmont would have come out. Actually, I don't know. I feel like this miss is actually kind of ass as he goes Reggie still. Because he could kill Reggie and then you gotta figure out what you want to do for um. Well, no. I was gonna say it's bad, but I've neglected how low the palace head was, yeah. Legion would have come out and just Aqua Jet. Again, assuming it's banded as Jet. So, maybe not actually that big a deal. And we see Reggie still, just to add a little insult to injury at the end there, actually get a flinch. Which I don't think mattered, because it Terra Watered. I'm pretty sure Palmont Double Shock would have killed it, but. Maybe there was some hopium, but still a pretty fun game. A lot of these games, of course, are coming down to the wire. Now we get my wonderful Sun and you. And I remember having to do a wall of calcs at the beginning of this battle. Trying to figure out what this Vika Bolt set is, because Vika Bolt, it generally is just sub Buginium Z. Vika Bolt is, like, frankly, a very annoying breaker to deal with in this tier, because the best check to it is Steelix. The problem is. What is Steelix doing back? Especially once a substitute goes up. So it gets a little annoying, but it's not unmanageable, especially if we get Watashi's team. He's got the Togedomaru, which at least pivots around it. It's kind of the same issue with Steelix, where like, what am I doing back? But he at least can pivot in. He resists Bug Buzz. You can take a Thunderbolt if you've got Lightning Rod for absolutely free. Spade Drudagon is also a good check. Um, Sneasel's faster, can hit it hard. Signal Lift's faster, can hit it hard. You have options, it's just still annoying to play against. Otherwise, I also look at the Glade as, like, a huge threat this game. It's definitely contingent partly on what the Glade set is, but um, basically every good Glade set can pop Sigil. Because that's going to be something that Watashi has to figure out a way to play against. The main issue I look at for Poe is the Sigil Lift actually just 6 0s him. And it's not, like, as simple as, you know, I lead Sigilith and I win. But I look at Sigilith versus Poe's team, and I just don't know what the counterplay is to any of the sets. The Sigilith's two main sets are Life Orb with Air Slash, Energy Ball, Heat Wave Roost. And then it's got these bulky setups so it's with Air Slash, Calm Mind Roost, and then you can have, like, Cosmic Power. You can have Psy Shock, you can have Stored Power, you can have some Goonery moves as well. You know, Fly and MZ. Sometimes you see this Mon run. Poison MC with Toxic and Calm Minds is like some Incineroar counterplay. God forbid you dig deep into the Brazilian Sigilyph set of Cosmic Power. Z Miracle Eye Stored Power. Yeah. Z Miracle Eye, guess what? That gives a special attack boost. Let's me beat Incineroar. Because, okay, now I can hit you with Stored Power. Good night. Good night, dumb cat. But, like, I look at, again... I look at setup sigil of sets, and I'm just like, especially if it's a T spike wheezing, which it does end up being. There's no good hazard removal because it has to be. It's guaranteed on preview. This has to be default whimsicott. Like this team has to have removal, so you know it's default whimsy. But that set's kind of ass. <laughs> it, it's not. 
it's actually like shockingly useful this game, but it's still so hard pressed to keep a T spike off the ground. And your sigil of counterplay is, I guess, Incineroar. And then it's to, you know, any set. And that's not really holding up long term. So setup sets will just run you down because just really not long term counterplay here outside of maybe Roar Steelix. And then you look at Life Orb Sigil of Sets would give like a similar headache. Because it's outspeeding everything on your team. Other than, um, Whimsicott. And so you better be pivoting around it perfectly. And even then, it's like, how do you actually get a free switch in, into Whimsicott? Outside of like, okay, I went Steelix on a Dairy Slash, and then I went Vipori on a Heat Wave, and then I went Whimsicott on Energy Ball. Like, you have to get that type of god sequence, and even then, it's not guaranteed. All in all, I just wonder where the air <laughs> It's why Pursuit is like nine mandatory on the teams in this format, because Sigilith will, I repeat, will have its way with your team if you don't have it. That. And yeah, we started off this battle with um some wonderful words from Hoenn confirmed. Um, you know, what's with the edgy Charizard? Like, whoa, it's missing an arm. <laughs> Absolute goblin. And yeah, the Dread led versus the Vika Volt, and we immediately see that this is a very specially defensive Dreadagon, eating up that Vika Volt bug buzz, getting that useful, useful toxic off, which actually makes this Vika Volt so much easier to deal with. The problem that we quickly see is wait, what is this damage it's doing? Because at first I'm like, okay, so it is, um, not Specs, but then I see 56 to a token of art. I'm like, wait, Specs? Question mark? But obviously we did a ton more to Dread, so this is the most Metronome Vika Volt ever. You don't see Metronome Vika Volt a ton, because ever since they learned what Metronome's function actually, or how Metronome actually works in Gen 7, and it actually gets stopped by Protect, people stopped running it as much. Because it was like, eh, who cares about Metronome anymore, man? They're just gonna have a Protect Mon. Kind of nice thing about Inu, at least, is there's not a ton of Protect Mons. You've got, like, Steelix, sometimes Incineroar, Megadino, which is a super rare Mon, Vaporeon, but this Mon isn't, like, super common. So it actually works out pretty decently in this format. So it's pretty cool. And we do see the Wish denied. As Stoys now comes in versus the Vapo, the annoying thing if you're Watashi is, um, what is Blastoise doing here, guys? <laughs> yeah, easy, quick, double. Shinizel comes out. Also, I just realized we can't see that T-Spike, and we need to make sure we can see it, because this is going to be the win con. So, Shinizel comes out versus the Whimsicott, and immediately, this is terrible for Poe, because you, if, assuming it's Prankster right, you can't defog. <laughs> it will get blocked, because Prankster doesn't work on Dark types. And Watashi, knowing his Calc, says Ice Shard won't KO, but at least make sure this Whimsicott dies. And this is so worth it, because now, the T-Spike stays up forever. That Incineroar is going to get poisoned eventually. And that is going to start, you know, the beginning of the end, in theory, to the Sigilith, right? So, Incineroar comes out here, it does get that poison on it, and it's going to already have to immediately switch to, because of the Stoys. The Vaporeon will always be the answer, but now Vapo gets poisoned. And in theory, this one could also kind of... It, it's really just glorified setup fodder, but it could, you know, I think Sigilith waste a little bit of turns. Maybe you, um, kill it with boredness. Kill it, make him die of boredom. Yeah, that's something. <laughs> we see this enough go for that roost here. And I mean, it's just kind of tough, because you need to eventually get a wish. But you want Incineroar to come in on the wish. It's just, yeah, your counterplay is so yucky. Hey, what? You got Steelix as well in this team, but based on how it was getting played, I really don't think that the Steelix even has a roar, because he would have gone to it on the Cosmic Power. So, Incineroar gets back up, and we do see immediate switch. You know, he wanted to at least respect the Incineroar early, because you still don't have confirmation on whether or not it's offensive or not. Offensive Incineroar would probably still be able to beat down Sigilip with those defense boosts. Because now we see a sacrifice of the Vika Volt kind, and Glade comes out. Because once you see this setup on Weezing, this is very exotic. Most Weezing are going to have Flamethrower. Or not flamethrower. They got like Will O Wisp, or I guess throw flamethrower in there. Over something here, usually T Spike or Taunt. Generally, from what I've seen out of Weezing, is you want one of T Spike slash Taunt. That's typically how it works out. And you have Sludge Bomb Pain Split. And then last move, Will O Wisp. So this is definitely an interesting take on the set. And since Poe sees this, he. I mean, okay, it wouldn't matter anyway, but still. <laughs> you know, it's not like a haze you gotta worry about if they wanna, like, randomly go for the greediest haze of their life. <laughs> I'm just kinda, I'm kinda waff a little bit here, but 
I see the Dread Sack here. And I will say, we do... We see my favorite set. Shadow Sneak Glade, I love it. It tells you it's Ghost DMZ as well. And then here, we see, of course, he's going to Shadow Sneak again. You're not going to let the Sigilyph just kill him with Air Slash. This is where we see, I think, the turning point of the battle. Because Poe actually, I believe, had a shot to get a pretty favorable endgame. Not guaranteed win or anything. Definitely not. But, as you saw and heard... I talked about preview and software in the first bit of the game. Sigilyph was looking like a problem. And I do think there was an outcome here where Gallade put in too much work and prevented Sigilyph from winning. Here we see a switch. As the Weezing stayed in the taunt. Which this is the funniest taunt of my life. It's not even like it's a bad taunt. It's just Watashi recognizing that Weezing isn't necessarily needed to win the battle. And it's still kind of like preferred to just say taunt in case one of these two comes out and tries to wish pass. My logic is, I think Galate should have just Zen headbutted. Take the kill on the Weezing, and if these are the last two, it's maybe winnable. The worry is if you let Stoys come in, it's maybe not the best, but I still think you could go Vaporeon, throw off a Wish, and then go Incineroar. It still has its berry, too, so I mean, there's that that could pop. I, I think that, like, line maybe is okay. Like, if Stoys comes out, you go Vaporeon. You can always immediately respond to Sigilyph with one of your Incineroar Steelix and go from there. If they go Sigilyph, it would have taken... I think it would have... From what I remember, the Calc plus two, it goes down to like 25-ish percent at a minimum. That's manageable to beat. Incineroar knockoff kills it. If you need to, so you can go Incineroar, you can knock it. Um, If they go Stoys, getting rid of that thing's lefties is good. If they go Weezing, knockoff into Flare Blitz kills it. And so I just... That seems to be like a better line that Poe could have taken. I don't know if it guarantees them the win, but you either are killing Weezing there, and now it's 2v3, and I think it's a winnable 2v3. As, as, again, this is partly me assuming the sets are viable in the matchup. Like, if it's Curse Licks, then I think you actually would probably win at that point. But you either get that, or you get a huge chunk on this that makes it so your next few turns are actually pretty decent for you. Anyhow, the Steelix gets taunted here. <laughs> and now the Weezing is actually back to full, just about. And it's actually now more useful Weezing, because it can be used to pivot into the Incineroar more effectively. You know, maybe you don't want to let Stoys get knocked. There you go. Because see, eventually, if this takes too many EQs, obviously, with a knock, especially with occasional burns thrown in, it's actually kind of not great for Stoys. Like, just think about it. If it had gotten knocked at some point by an Incineroar, it's probably, like, at 30% or something by now. <laughs> but now, I mean, I don't know. I mean, this game kind of feels like inevitably Sigil of Wins. That, that's where my mind is at as I look at this as a viewer. And we do see there the Figgy Bear confirmed. Now, Sigil of will always switch here. We talked about it. Um, it is going to be revealed, I believe, here. Yes, this is bulky Incineroar. Knockoff still does, like, 51 to 60 to an unboosted Sigil. So... You know, pending where this thing's HP is at, it actually can, um, lose to the Incineroar, even if it's boosting. It could also, um, beat the Incineroar very easily, potentially. But yeah. So, we see Weezing again. Weezing at this point is kind of nice to have around, since the Gallade swapped, because it is going to shut down the Steelix very consistently. It's not like you're beating it 1v1 necessarily, but you're getting a decent enough trade. And with Stoys around, you can always reposition on Heavy Slams. And we talked about earlier, I mean, Stoys are pretty annoying. It also forces very linear play from Poe, because Vaporeon, like, always has to come out here, or wants to come out. Unless you're sacking Gallade. And he still wants to keep Gallade around for maybe, like, some last hit that maybe he can get. He still has his, um, Z-move as well. Maybe he can catch the Sigil with a Ghostium. And, it, you know, is beating this core impossible? No, it, it's doable. And now we see again, Incineroar comes out versus the Weezing. And if you're faster here, it's great. But it, he switches. <laughs> so odds are he's got um no speed. Because if you're if you have speed there, or you're not like minus speed nature, you just knock. And you take your KO. So a little unfortunate switch there from Poe. If he had standing, could have killed the Weezing, and then again, Sigilif comes out. I mean, from there it's a little freaky, but I think maybe playable. Maybe playable. 
<laughs> it might have honestly not even mattered there. It might have been better always to swap there and get Steelix out just to make sure Sigil couldn't set up. It is what it is. Now we're going to see Stoys come right back on out. And I mean, Scald is starting to look very, very free. And we do see the swag play here from Watashi. Hits a rapid spin on the before round. Makes sure that will die to the poison. Very, very cool play to see there. And now, again, it's up last two raw. He goes for the ghost deal, but unfortunately, it's a little too little too late. Because he lost his Vaporeon. He kind of needed it around to have any sort of chance versus last month's toys. And now we do see the Supersonic Sky Strike Third Night won't kill Edson. But it doesn't matter at this point. You got the Blast Toys. Hit him with the Brat Scald. And another Brat Scald. Very good game. Like I said, I don't know if the Galade just throwing up his headbutt would have won the game. I, I Personally, I think it was going to cover most options Watashi had, though, quite well. And now, another blue screen. Beautiful. <laughs> we get to our final game. Another Kyo game. Look at, look at Kid Kyo, Ben. Yeah, he's had such a good tournament run. It's been very fun to watch. I'm just I'm a big fan of the teams he brings, too. This team, less so. It's, it's just kind of boring. But I respect it. Sometimes you gotta bring boring, especially in a tie break. Unfortunately, I'm probably one of the worst teams to bring in this tie break. Um, the reason for it's kind of simple. You have no hazard control, and they have spikes. That's always a little bit questionable. Main thing too is like you have you're gonna have um spikes being here. Delphox will be boots, and Umbreon can be boots. That's all three of your mons heavily pressured by spikes, which I don't really love. It doesn't really matter that much. But it's just one of those things where I look at the matchup and I go, God damn it. I, and I roll this matchup and I'm like, God damn it, why don't I have a spinner? Why don't I have a defogger? It just feels kind of bad. And, and you know, I could, I could say all this, that preview. It You'll see more in the battle why this ends up manifesting in such a bad way. I mean, look at preview too. Doug's team is very, very offbeat. You know, we talk about how Keo had his, like, a super standard build. Doug's has anything but standard because... I mean, it's not like all these mods are uncommon, right? Gligar, though, nowhere near as common as it once was. Gudra fell off a cliff in relevancy. Houndstone, it, it's a tournament pick, really. Alolan Sandslash, I'm I'm not going to say I invented it in this tier, because I didn't. But I did pass someone with a utility Sandslash set. So do with that as you will. Do as you will. And you got, you know, you got basically wall, wall, wall. Gudra, which is going to have some breaking power to it, but... You know, it's still, it's Gudra. And you got Inteleon, so you're thinking Specs most likely. It doesn't have to be, but most likely. And there's the Scrafty here. And it's like the one matchup where I look at it and I'm like, this might just be DD Scrafty, despite it not being HO. Because the team kind of wants some more power, I feel. Bulk up Scrafty, I feel, would make more sense if this had a Wish Passer somewhere on it. Because then you can really start talking about it maybe being a bit more, um, semi-stall or like, oh yeah, just a semi-stall or just a defensive team. Like maybe make this a Sylveon, right? Which, okay. Maybe not the best because your Inteleon match is really bleak. But say you could manage to fit a Sylveon on this build. Or even an Umbreon, right? You wouldn't be able to with this. But get your Wish Pass. Maybe it's okay to have Bulk Up Scrafty. Because then you can just say, okay, well my team's semi-stall. And then I have the um, Inteleon there for some extra speed and power. I look at these Scrafty. It's not like amazing, but there's potential. Especially since you can always spam DD on the Bloom. Potentially you get plus 6, you knock it, and you do one shot. You don't even need to get plus 6 for that. It's funny, Bulk Up's Crafty actually doesn't even one shot Bloom at plus 6, even with it having an item still. I think you do like 99. <laughs> it's really sad. <laughs> but DD, since you have that offensive investment, doesn't matter as much. But yeah, general threat level stuff. I mean, Kyo has this Delphox, which actually looks insane here. Inteleon, of course, is a good check. Scrafty, pending set, is a check, too. But, like, otherwise, I mean, oof. Cook sesh, man. Cooked, cooked. If I'm plus two, cooked. Um, there's a lot of things that can make you upset. Um, there's things that can make you upset. And Inteleon, there's a little thing that can make you upset, too. A couple things. And it even Flygon here. Like, I look at KST, but the main thing I'm looking at is the set of Flygon versus Legion. Because you'd say, okay, well, this could be Bandit maybe, and then that's Scarf. The reason I'm going to say immediately it's Scarf and then here, and then, like, probably DD here, is you kind of need Scarf Legion so that you have more justification to make this flag on DD and give you a better win condition. I mentioned it, I believe, yesterday's video of the VR update. But I don't think Plot Fox is win con. It's a breaker. 
And so I think you really want to have this as a setup option. Anyhow, let's get into it. Legion's led with into Gudra, and immediately I am confirmed right, because this flip turn damage is very scarf. So there you go. <laughs> Nomiron comes in as Gudra does a million to it. That is good damage. Reminding people, Gudra is a good mod, man. A little out class magic algae, but a good mod. And we do get the right double here. And now the dog comes out, and I'm gonna be honest, this wave crash here to me kind of is a summary of a lot of the later turns, in my view, my opinion. Where I think there's a little bit of underestimating on Keo's side of Mr. Houndstone. So it takes very little from Wave Crash. It's going to be able to switch into those very easily later on. Just has to be cognizant of its HP. Make sure you're not too pressured. The Glygar now comes out on the Umbreon because, I mean, this is a free spike if I've ever seen one. Can't even Toxic me. Just very, very free. A little bit surprised by Keo that he would risk a Toxic on his Umbreon. But, assumingly, he just expected, hey, man... <laughs> There's no way he thinks I'll protect on this, right? There you go. And now Plume comes out, and Plume's able to get a little bit of chip on Gligar, but now all three spikes are up, and we will see them kind of dictate this game. I don't feel like the spikes ended up being like super duper impactful, but you can see the potential for limiting Legion later on, especially because you just can't pivot and wave crash as much, especially now rocks are up. Plume is going to be a little bit more hard pressure now on switches too, because it's a lot harder to switch into, say, I mean, say you're trying to switch into Inteleon, maybe it's going for Surf and you want Plume to be the answer there. Well, when you got all these hazards, you're probably just 2-hit KO. <laughs> so there it is. Now, remember I talked about um little techs you could do to beat Inteleon up with the Delphox. You may be thinking I was talking about like Terra Grass with Grass Knot. No. Protect. This is very, very cool. Because this helps you in a couple other matchups too. So Inteleon's a very obvious one. Another one is Flygon. So if they're going to EQ or U-turn, you can get the scout on that. Help out there. It even helps out versus the other ones like Basque Legion. Like, yeah, Legion can always flip on you. That's going to KO you and force the switch. But it helps let you know what you need to go into on the flip turn. Same thing with like a Tauros if it's going to wave crash your CC or do some other third thing. Even a Floatzel if you want to know whether it's going to flip turn or maybe even... Maybe they're throwing up an Ice Spinner that turn. I don't know. It's a very cool option though. I like Protect Fox. Because as we see here... It's very, very useful, because now Gligar has to be sacked, and this is actually really good for Keo, because if this is Dragon Dance Flygon, well, it looks incredible now. <laughs> I mean, keep, again, keep in mind, Fluffy does not block EQ, it does not reduce EQ damage, so you could potentially DD up and get by that. And now we see Delphox, we see, again, we talked about ways it can get by Gudra, there's one of them, and once again, the Italian will get protected on. This is the funniest Terra Water I've ever seen, by the way. Is there is no incentive to go for it immediately. Because there's, he's always protecting. Like, why are we Terra Watering? It doesn't matter in the grand scheme, because he's obviously... He wants to Terra Water, because... I mean, look at Kyo's team. Terra Water Hydro Pump does numbers versus these guys. It's just so funny to me. He's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna tear up this turn. <laughs> Goes for the pump. Now here is where I think again a little bit underestimated the Houndstones have because why? I don't know. I look at this. I thought that was a very odd decision to sack Fox here, because Fox is really your only way of doing meaningful pressuring on the Houndstone, especially since it revealed that it was Nightshade. That's the important part because it means Delphox can switch in like one time, not worry about anything. Unless I'm just wrong. This has Poltergeist too. But I see Nightshade. I don't think it does. And now you're really reliant on like. You know, maybe just throwing Vile Plumber at it. Maybe you're hoping that Flygon can get by it later on with an EQ. I looked at this and I was like thinking maybe Reggie Seal's a better sack there to Hydro Pump. Because it's not really doing a ton here. I mean, it's not going to beat down Scrafty. You know, maybe you have Iron Defense or something and you can match the boosts. But, um, you know, Sand Slash, I, again, Delphox would do the same thing. We also later see that Vile Plume's Terra type would help. At least an annoy it. Um... You know, again, Houndstone is really negligible versus... I think Registeel is pretty... I don't know, pretty useless. But now we see the plume come out. We see Kyo decide he wants to have some fun too in Terra Water. This, in my view, is just him wanting to make sure this didn't reveal Ice Beam that turn. You know, non-choice. And he gets the KO on the Inteleon. So, again, I mean, assuming that the turns just play out the same way, Inteleon maybe has to pump twice to kill the Registeel. And then you go plume. I don't know, I think having Fox alive is a little bit better now. Because... Houndstone, like I mentioned, yeah, you could beat it down with Plume probably. It's just, yeah, maybe it's not the most fun. I think it works out. It's just there's this thing, which it doesn't really do anything to you. 
is just going to make you waste power points and throw Scrafty in there too, I think you could actually see some potential for Plume to just get stalled out forever. Now we're going to see some Sap come out. And again, we talk about how Plume can kind of just sit in front of this anyway. The problem is Keo got very, very just ambitious and died to Icicle Crash. So now I look at the game and I ask, I don't think, and I say to myself, I don't think Keo can even break this. <laughs> That's an overstatement, he definitely can. It's just I look at the overall context of the team and I go, I don't think Keo can break this core. I think he needed Delphox. I think even at the, once he sacked Delphox, I think he really had to keep flying on. They may ask, okay, where was he ever getting a Dragon Dance? Correct. I don't know where he was, but EQ would have still been good. I mean, it would have KO'd this or done enough to where you're probably beating it later on with um, Plume. And it would have done at least better damage than anything else on the team was doing outside of Vile Plume to the dog. And really, the rest of this game is just going to be KO being incapable of doing much of anything. We talked about already, Houndstone does not care about these wave crashes. You, you know, you're better off just dealing your own recoil to yourself, not even touching the Houndstone, basically. And it's just kind of a matter of he's lost all breaking power on the build. He doesn't have anything. Also, here you go. It, it is a DD as well. So, EQ would have been doing a lot more to this Scrafty than if it was a bulk upset. And I'm just going to skip through these turns because I'm going to be honest... All it is is a lot of prolonging the inevitable. There's there's just nothing Keo can really do at this point, at least in my view. You, you know, again, you see Scraft, not Scrafty, that's a Sand Slash. You see Sand Slash is just going to stall out the Vile Plume and Power Points. You'll throw in a little switch every now and then just because, I mean, may as well throw Scrafty out there every now and then. <laughs> I mean, it can tank a hit, you can Drain Punch for some chip, you know, why not? <laughs> You don't need to let Sandslash burn all of its power points, you know? It's just good management of his overall power points on Doug's end. And yeah, a little bit of a mismanagement on Keo of his breaking power. Like, like I said, I think at the very beginning of the battle, he underestimated the annoyingness of Houndstone, and even to a lesser extent the Sandslash, by sacking his Flygon. He just didn't really have a way to bypass it at that point. And we're going to slowly see this Vile Plume just run out of moves. I mean, at a point, it just can't really do anything. Scra you know, throw Scrafty in there every now and then. He, you know, he's gotten this one really low, but he doesn't have that resource really to beat it. So Reggie still now comes out for the first time. And we do see it as just T-Wave, so I mean, he doesn't even have setup. A little bit unfortunate for Keo. And at this point, yeah. Sometimes, again... Sometimes one turn can really do a lot for a battle. I do think picking Fox over maybe Registeel, for example, to preserve would have been a bit better. But, hey, as the spectator, watching this game many days after it was played, that's very easy for me to say. So, hey. <laughs> Always, you know, hindsight's 2020. But I hope y'all enjoyed. I really hope y'all enjoyed the Sun and Moon. If y'all want me to cover more Sun and Moon games, by the way, let me know. I, I thoroughly enjoy this tier. I think it's one of the best in new generations. I know it's not the... Most popular take, but I have fun with it, so I'd like to share the fun. <laughs> Catch y'all next time, though, man. Peace.